All right, before we begin our lecture, I want to make sure that you are prepared to take good notes through all these lectures. So make sure that on your notes before you begin, you write down the heading. So in this case, it will be module one, lecture 1.1, decimal number system. You have a date on the side. The pharma is only column is here, as we talked about in module zero, uh, so that if you have any thoughts, any questions that you want to ask later, you can write that here. If you want to do any scratch work for your answers, you can do it here as well. All right, we asked you to do counting project when uh, at the end of the module zero lecture. But we want to take an inventory to see if you actually did it. If you have not attempted it yet, please pause the video here and just give it a try. Try something, even if you feel like nothing is coming, spend at least five or 10 minutes and see what happens. You might be very surprised. All right, if you're trying and you're stuck, just stop, focus, be quiet, bring your attention to your breath. Everything under observation changes, just remember. So focus, breathing in, become aware of your in-breath, Breathing out, become aware of your out breath. Do that a few times until uh, you feel your brain is a little more clearer to think. And then continue attempting if you're having trouble. If you're not having trouble, that's great. Uh, if you're having trouble, don't self-judge and make assumptions about your ability. This is not going to serve any purpose. But think about all the positives. Remember, it's OK to not be able to do every single thing right away. What is most important is the attempt part. If you are attempting it, then that is really good. All right, so now you have attempted the project, and we're going to share some common experiences that many of you had. I'm going to talk about what some of you did in class. We looked at groupings or bundlings of some sort. Some of you use numbers. Some of you use letters. And when I say numbers, you made up some symbols for numbers, and that's great. But each one of you had some sort of bundling, and the smallest number in your bundle is called the base of your number system. Making the groups consistent across larger quantities of objects, uh, that's something we saw that many of you did. But we also had many difficulties in making our number system. This is what I saw in some of your notes. Some people wrote that. They have trouble thinking for even more than two minutes. It was extremely frustrating. And that's OK. Uh, going through this process tells you what math doing mathematics is like. Some of you tried using letters, but then didn't know what to do after the letters were exhausted after the letter Z. And one of you wrote that you needed to ask in class uh, what other ways of doing this project are because you were struggling so much. So these are just some samples that I am uh, showing you in case uh, you know you want to know what people write in the form eyes only column. And you don't have to have anything. It could be all blank. Some other concerns that people voiced was they had trouble extending their system to larger numbers. Some of you had trouble understanding your own system to communicate well with other people. You also had trouble understanding what some other people did in class. Also, some of you just ran out of symbols after a certain number of toothpicks were exhausted. And then the last thing was being able to add or subtract or multiply or divide using your system that you came up with. So as you can see, creating a number system is not that easy. It actually takes quite a lot of thought. And it is very important to remember that you know numbers or in some form have existed from primitive humans till the most advanced civilizations. They all felt a need to develop number systems to uh, make objective sense of the world. You know, starting with bartering or keeping track of possessions like their sheep. And then, of course, now in advanced sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, and even technology. Without numbers, there would not be many of these things. Numbers help us facilitate quantitative communication. We also allows us to make sense of how much something is. One quantity is bigger than other, and so on. The oldest form of numeration was the use of tally marks 25 to 35,000 years ago in the Stone Age. 
you know, sometimes looking at history gives us some motivation and inspires us to learn because it uh, humanizes some of the mathematics. And that's, it's not just a dry subject anymore. So tally marks is the oldest form of numerations, which is just shown right here. Did you see that? So we go one, two, three, four, and five. For a fifth tally mark, you just have a horizontal bar going across. Even to this day, we use this tally mark system, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Uh, people have found bones and carvings that show the use of tally marks. So let's look at some of the past civilizations and what kind of number systems they use. The Babylonians, you know, 3 to 2000 BC, like 5,000 years ago almost, uh, they used base 16 number system, which we still use to this day when we're looking at the clocks. We have 60 seconds is one minute, 60 minutes is one hour, and so on. The way they wrote their numbers were upside down triangles for one, sideways symbol like this for tens. And so 12,074 was written in this manner. And in our system, this is what might make sense to you. The Aztecs and the Mayans used base 20 system in the 4th century AD. And all three of these civilizations did very complex astronomical computations. Our own decimal system has been credited cataloging to Bhaskaracharya in the 11th century AD. And that's the first time that people are seen to use the number zero, which was referred to as Shunya, to represent what it means now to us, and not just as a positional placeholder. The digits we use are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then after 9, we will start grouping in groups of tens. So each of these digits represents how many objects you have, and one more than nine is represented as one group of ten and zero singletons. The next number is written as one group of tens and one singleton. The one after that is one group of ten and two singletons. So here we have eleven, and this is referred to as twelve. Then we go thirteen, fourteen, and so on. Once you know how to count, if you go to 99, the one number after 99 is going to be written as 1, 0, 0, 0 singletons, 0 tens, and one group of 100s. So in our decimal number system, position of each digit matters. And if you look at the decimal point, it separates numbers that are uh, bigger than 1 from numbers that are fractional, and we use uh, powers of 10 to represent it. So for example, if you have the number 324.56 in the expanded form, it will look like this. And it is very important that you understand the values, that place values of each of these digits. So for example, this 3 is considered to be in the hundreds place, 2 is in the tens place, 4 is in the ones place, 5 is in the tenths place, and 6 is in the hundreds place. So it's important you understand and recognize what each of these place values represent. Another way to write this would be uh, in the exponential notation, where you have 10 squared is 100. And 1 over 10 is written as 10 to the negative 1. 1 over 100 is 10 to the negative second. So with this structure, we can see that multiplying and uh, dividing by 10 becomes very easy. For example, if you want to multiply 324.56 by 1,000, you're going to move the decimal point 1, 2, and 3 places to the right to get you the new number 324,560. If you're going to divide by powers of 10, you're going to move the decimal to the left. And how many places? Four places, and that's your new number. So multiplying by powers of 10, uh, like 100, 10,000, 1,000, makes the number big. Whereas dividing by 10, 100, 1,000 is going to make the number smaller, in case you have trouble remembering which way to move the decimal. All right, there are many forms of 
decimal numbers, terminating decimals, which means they have finite number of digits. So you can see they have a certain number of digits and it stops. Whereas non-terminating decimal means the number of digits just keep on going. And in that, you have two types with repeating pattern. And you write the repeating pattern in the following way, 3.41 bar. The bar means that the 4-1 repeats. So you're 4 one 4 one 4 one 4 one repeating. Here's another example. For non-terminating decimal without repeating pattern, the digits just keep on going. And there does not have to be any pattern at all. In this particular case, you have a pattern, but it's not a repeating pattern. You can see how there's an extra one, then two extra ones, then three extra ones. So it's not a repeating pattern. All right, so in daily life, where are you going to use numbers? Maybe to pay some bills or to buy things. So if you bought, if Julie bought a TV for $453.68, she could pay by credit card or by check. And if she wrote a check, it would look something like this. So you can see we need to know how to work with decimal numbers, be able to write them in words like this, or as numerals like how you see there. So understanding decimal number is the key to understand much more complicated objects later. Uh, and uh, for example, if you take whole numbers like 324 and write them in expanded form, and then replace the tens with x's just for fun. You get an object called polynomial of degree 2, 3x squared plus 2x plus 4. So I think that this is something to keep in mind, that mathematics is something that is developed from need. And you just replace things for fun to see what happens, and then play with it. And playing just means how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, or do whatever else you might think of to these objects. If you take all decimal number systems and replace all tens with x's, it actually gives rise to something called algebraic expressions. And so polynomials are a special case of algebraic expressions, which we'll see later. So here's your homework. 